What are you doing, guys? Hey, kitty. Good morning, kitties. Good morning, Fuzzball and Buddy. Good morning. Hey, everybody. What you doing? Good morning. <laughs> oh, it's a gorgeous day out here on the farm, guys. Awesome day. Come along. We're going to have some fun. We're going to run over and take care of the cows. And it's just going to be a fun Sunday morning. So happy Sunday. Uh, welcome to the farm. Uh, we have new calves all over the ground. <laughs> I say all over the ground. They're just all over. You're going to stay here, bro. Buddy's legs are still hurting. His hips are bothering him a little bit. So I'm not taking him all the way across the farm. Plus we're moving the cows. So good morning. As you come in the door, guys, please hit that like button. If you're not subscribed or following the channel and you've been invited to follow, please accept that invitation. If you've been invited to follow over on Facebook, love to have you. Uh, we are live on Cows and Coffee live stream channel on uh, YouTube, and we're live also on Facebook. So if you're not following on Facebook, you're probably missing out on some stuff. It's a good thing. If you're not following on YouTube, it's just the live stream channel. So we're going to fire the ATV up. As you guys can see, my little garage shop building is a mess here. <laughs> Come on. There we go. Let's back on out here, and uh, we're going to ride across the farm to check the cows. Boy, that thing is rattling pretty loud this morning. <laughs> all right. I have been planting trees all day yesterday. Planting trees, planting trees, trees after tree after tree. Uh, we had a company called Food Forest Nursery uh, that's we ordered a bunch of trees from and you guys will see that in a future video there's a few more in that bucket er, 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 right there that i've got to plant today lots of trees going in the ground native species non some non-native species uh like japanese uh chestnut we planted down here by the creek uh, a lot of uh good stuff for the wildlife hmm. my low fuel lights on i hope we got enough to get across the farm <laughs> Uh, good morning, Leslie, Brian, or excuse me, Berlin Valley Stables, our friends in Ohio. Good morning, everybody. So I'm on the Honda Rubicon automatic transmission, and I have one hand free. <laughs> but I better start opening my gate as I head down here, or we won't get out. <laughs> uh, lots of work to get done today on the farm. We're going to get on down the hill real quick here. Yeehaw! Planted about eight trees in this pasture yesterday. We're trying to get some shade for the cows. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Planted a few down on the creek right here too. I'm tired. My shoulders are sore <laughs> from planting trees. Even though I was doing it with a tractor, my neck is sore from turning and looking backwards. If you've ever ran an auger on the back of a tractor, you know what I mean. I hope we don't run out of gas. If we run out of gas, you guys can totally make fun of me. I got low fuel warning on this thing. <laughs> uh, let's show you where we're headed. are up here patiently waiting for me. We've got a little bit of fence work to do before we move the cows over. One of our new trees. All these trees that I planted in this pasture, they're all walnut trees. There's one up here. I'll take you over and I'll show you guys real quick. Might as well. we got nothing better to do. It's a beautiful Sunday morning. Beautiful. Got uh, a lot of air traffic coming overhead here. <laughs> Uh, when it stays like this, we've got a flight school close by, and although it's super annoying, I've been thinking about getting my pilot's license also. So here's one of the trees that we planted, that I planted yesterday. These are uh, uh, walnuts, okay? So that's a little walnut sapling. 
bare root walnut sapling. There's one here, there's one there. I planted them throughout the entire pasture so that they'd grow up and give the cows a little bit of shade and we'd have some pasture beautification also. I've got more walnut. Oh, look at this. Here's why you don't throw trash out. This is in a hay bale, just found it. Uh, I've got more walnut saplings that are gonna go in over time. But again, guys, check out Food Forest Nursery. Uh, that's where we got the trees from. I think I ordered somewhere in the neighborhood of 140, 120 to 140 trees. So put a lot of trees in the ground. We're gonna grab a tripod and we're gonna head on over here. Um, check out the new baby cows and let them into uh, some fresh green grass. We got a frost last night, which is quite disappointing. Uh, hopefully that's our last frost of the year, but that's gonna stunt the growth of the grass a little bit once again here on the farm. I'm not really happy about that. Uh, you know, nature is what it is. So in case you guys don't know, oh, oh it's hard to do this with one hand. <laughs> in case you guys don't know, we live near, near Virginia, very close to Martinsville, Virginia which is where the NASCAR race is today. So there will be helicopters and blimps and all kinds of stuff flying over a little bit later today. A lot of my neighbors are going to the race, but farm's gotta take priority today. Gotta make hay while the sun is shining. It's a beautiful day and I've got piles and piles of work to get done. I need, we're gonna walk a bit. <laughs> Yesterday, I'll bet you I walked five miles maybe more than five miles planting all these trees and i wish i would have had enough to plant over in this pasture too you guys can see there are really no shade trees in this pasture so i have to think about where i move the cattle in the in the evening time and in the morning time um, in the hot summer months it's not too hot right now so we don't have to worry about it but it's a good time the girls are right here hey cows Hey cows, we can't put you on green grass yet because dad's not prepared. Good morning. Morning everybody. <coughs> Good morning. What you guys up to? Huh? <laughs> How's Bud? Hey Bud. Bud grumpy today or is Bud going to be my friend? Bud. Yeah, you smell that? It smells like mustard. Dad's been marinating, been marinating some food for later. <laughs> All right. Whoa. Guys, I gotta run up and grab, uh, if you have an iPhone, look at the tracker. It will tell you, what are you talking about, man? How are you going to protect the trees until they're big enough? I'm gonna put fencing around those trees, so. What fencing will you build around the trees? There we go. That's it. All I'm going to do, dogs are going to be barking if you run out of gas out there. I don't think, I think walking is no big deal. I, I, man, you definitely can't be lazy and have a farm like this. Some people will walk, will ride or drive uh, 300 yards, man. If I've got a, like, look at how far we just walked. That's probably yeah, 250 yards, something like that. I don't mind walking. I enjoy walking. It's peaceful. <laughs> right, Cal? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it is peaceful. What keeps the cows from eating the trees? That's it. Uh, we're going to build a little fence around each one. Um, yeah. So the cows typically won't be chowing down on a uh, uh, walnut tree either that's not really a very palatable tree so but we do have to protect them and we'll put three posts in the ground one two three and then i'll run a poly wire around that and that typically will keep them out of that little spot they might nibble around the underside of it or something like that i've got to run and grab some fence wire i'll be right back and let you guys watch the cows for a second you guys keep an eye on the cows we're gonna turn the camera around real quick and and uh let you watch the cows. Here's how the live stream is going to go. <laughs> that cow's going to moo. <laughs> Here's what we're going to do. Put you guys on the cows for just a few minutes. 
as I get this fencing handle, you can check them out and then I'll uh, be back and we'll talk a little bit about what's been going on. I think we have 14 calves right now. I'll let you guys count them here in just a minute. I'll be right back. We'll let you, we'll even put the microphone down here for you guys to listen to them mooing. Maybe if I can make the microphone stick to something. Metal, 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 metal. <laughs> Everything's aluminum. There, there's a spot. Be right back. Okay, so the cows moved. <laughs> oh, that's funny. As soon as I leave, they all left you guys too. They follow me like kittens, which is kind of fun. It's good for when I need to round up the cows, that's for sure. I've got a little bit of fencing repair to do over here before I can move these guys in. Uh, again, so hang tight with me. Um, See if we got any questions you guys have asked right quick before I get shocked by the electric fence. I heard that cows can't eat acorns or they will get sick. They can eat a few acorns. We lost a calf to uh, acorns. I think they have, uh, they have some sort of chemical in them. One of you guys can Google that if you want to. Um, so I've never heard of a cow eating black walnut. You might use open-ended barrels open-ended barrels to guard the trees. Nah, we'll be all right. We'll be okay. I've got a little system all worked out. Um, the cows will knock a barrel over in a heartbeat. Like if you put a barrel out here in the pasture, that's just a target. Blah, blah, blah. It'll just get knocked over. Let me run over here. I'm going to adjust the fence. Don't laugh at me. I've got my Nikes on. <laughs> uh, don't have any good uh, comfortable walking shoes. For, uh, for walking in the pastures right now. I'm gonna have to work on that. So I hit the fence, and you guys probably can't see a lot of detail here, but I hit the fence the other day with the mower when I was out here mowing. And uh, that dictates that I've gotta do a little fence repair. Super easy to do fence repair uh, on this place because everything, uh, <laughs> Super easy to do fence repair because everything is, uh, you just tie a knot basically. So if you break a fence wire, you just tie a knot and make a new one. Pretty simple. We'll drag this guy out. This little fence repair will probably take about five minutes if I can pull enough wire off. There we go. Now first thing the cows are gonna do is off running and try to find a way out of this paddock so <laughs> we'll have to make some uh about to take a little walk here in a second 
this is just what I'm doing today. It's a gorgeous day out here, guys. No wind really to speak of. It's been super windy. Um, I don't know how windy it's been where you guys live, but it's been super, super, super windy here. Typically we get high winds in March, but it's April. I've had enough of it, enough of the wind to the point where it's just really frustrating to even go outside. Okay. All right. Cows are impatient. These, these guys are so spoiled. This is the most spoiled bunch of cows you'll ever run across. <laughs> now, how am I gonna do this, kids? That sound is the sound of a spoiled, rotten cow. <laughs> Let's bring you guys in a little closer because we're getting ready to move move everybody. Yeah, that's the sound of a spoiled rotten cow. Now, somebody asked something about want, uh, acorns a little bit ago. Um, acorns and walnuts are not the same. I've got buzzards out in the pasture right here. We need to investigate that. Hopefully we don't have a calf on the ground. Uh, but again, uh, walnuts, I, I don't, I've never heard of a cow getting, I guess if, if it can happen, it will happen, but I never heard of a cow getting sick from a walnut. I've heard of one choking on a walnut before, but gosh, you'd really have to be a, not so bright cow, I guess. <laughs> they do like to get in trouble. Still doing this little fence repair here. Okay. Shame on me. You guys, what are you guys up to? Trouble cows. This is not my ideal fencing repair. I'm just tying a knot in it up here at the gate. I know you don't see me, but I'm right here beside you. All right. I'm gonna have some cows moving in a second. Okay. Here we go. I need you guys. I've got to walk all the way down here to the end. Let's just uh, let's just all go for a quick walk. <laughs> I know if I don't do it, I'm I'm going to regret it. I've got to walk all the way down here and just double check this fence. I checked it the other day, but I want to make sure the cows can't get through into the woods down here. So here comes another 300 yard walk. So here's what I did with the mower. <laughs> I was out here and I raised the mower up a little bit too late and chopped up the electric fence. It happens. It happens. Where we're going to go is right down here. We're just going to double check everything's hooked up. I made homemade ice cream and scratch made biscuits. This is Michael Blum. Awesome. Black walnut is toxic. Yep. Grandpa's farm. My grandfather's farm had black walnut growing all over it. Never had an issue with the cattle. Um, it's toxic, but you got to eat it for it to be toxic. And the odds of, of a cow eating a gigantic black walnut that tastes horrible are pretty low. I've got the color of this fence. I don't like the color of this fence. I'm going to have to, the cows can't see it. We got a lot of walking to do here today. I should have done all this yesterday, but just got too busy planting trees, beautifying the land. And I think I do see a gate open down here. Cool. Can cows eat persimmons without worry? I don't know. It's something you're gonna have to Google. That's some bitter stuff though. I mean, if it's bitter to you, it's bitter to a cow. The issue is overconsumption, okay? So cows can eat acorns, hence the oak trees right here. Um, and we lost a calf to acorn poisoning 
because the calf wouldn't stop eating the acorns. It just kept eating and eating and eating and it gorged itself on the acorns and it caused it to bloat, get sick, and it died. It just laid down and this just died. I mean, that's just what happened. Kind of sad, but lesson learned. And, you know, I, a cow shouldn't do that. <laughs> it just shouldn't do that. So we got to keep an eye. We had a bumper crop of acorns last year before last. And that's how I lost a, a young animal. And it was a eh, six month old, seven month old calf. So my son has a bad reaction to sap from blackberry. Blackberry walnut, what's a blackberry walnut tree? Every animal eats persimmon, gotcha. I hear persimmon seeds can be toxic also, but I don't, I don't see that as an issue. Every farm around here has persimmons growing wild on it. It's pretty, pretty common stuff. You guys are gonna have to watch the cows again for a second because I'm gonna run up here and fix another portion of fence and then we're gonna move the girls in into the new padding. I do see buzzards and we will go investigate that. When there are buzzards in the pasture, it means potentially we've got a mama that's had a calf <clears throat> and they're laying over in the bushes over here. So stick around to the end. I'm out of breath walking up this hill. Stick around to the end and we'll show you. All right. Survival of the fittest. Life, life, not everything survives. Yeah, well, it's kind of your job as a uh, farmer or rancher to make sure that you're not putting your animals in a compromising position also. Okie doke. So, let's put you guys on the cows for just a second. I'm gonna grab that fence reel and uh, you guys cow sit for me, okay? That's a water, water tank right there. <clears throat> and then you don't have to hear me breathe. I will leave the microphone up here so you can hear the cows too. Be right back.
Okay, here's what I had to do, guys. Sorry it took me so long. This is uh, very hard for the cows to see. This is not poly braid. It's uh, just a poly wire. Uh, it still is electrified, but the cows can't see it. See how much it matches. Oh, let's put it behind some green. Where is the green? Like the pasture. Come on, which way? There we go. It matches the green of the pasture, so the cows can't see it. Oh man, I just stepped in something. <laughs> how many cows are per acre are you supporting? So why we're really not thinking about it in cows per acre here. Uh, what we have is a rotational, intensive rotational grazing uh, scenario. So currently there's about 52 total animals and we have about 85 to 90 acres fenced. Okay, so you can do the math there. Um, school of thought around here, uh, we'll mic up again. Some of the school of thought around here, got the reel, is that uh, cattle take around five acres per cow around here. I'm not finding that to be true with the intensive grazing methods that I'm using. So, you know, just kind of have to play it by ear. On Cows and Coffee, we have 56 watching, only 17 likes, says Michael. Yeah, hit the like button. I guess if they're running, they won't see it. Yeah, exactly. So they ran through that fence last time. Uh, and that's why we're why I had to go back there and get it. Something that's been on the chore list for about all, <laughs> pretty much all winter long. And I just got to it. That's it. Lots of chores to get done. We're going to be moving right in here. And you guys are going to get the show. This is fun when I move the cows in here. All right. Okay, kids, let's go. Woo! Come on. Count them, guys. Give me a head count. One, two. Hey kids, <laughs> did you guys get a head count? Here comes Tammy. Go Tammy, go! <laughs> did you guys get a head count? <laughs> Congrats on the new front loader, looks awesome. Yeah, that thing's called a cast loader. I broke the window out of it. You'll see a post here later today. I broke the window out of it uh, day before yesterday. Got a few straggler calves right here. Hey kids. You want to learn how to go through the gate like big big boys and girls? Let me go out here. The calves are a little skittish and they can go right under the wire, but I prefer them go through the gate. Why don't we go through the gate like a big boy? Why don't you go through the gate like a big boy? There you go, big boy. That's a smart calf. So the calves are learning about the electric fence. It takes them um, maybe six months or so, five months or so to really learn about the electric fence. We're gonna go down here right in the middle of the cows and, and talk real quick. Um, it just takes a little time for them to learn is what it is. Uh, they will run through a fence and they will tear a fence up. They're all running right now, but they're still wary. You see them out there, they're still wary and they know that that electric fence will knock the snot out of them. And that's what we want. We want them to be, to learn the electric fence, respect the electric fence and not get shocked. I don't want them to get shocked. Um, but I do want them to learn. And the way that they learn is through experience. And experience tells them, hey, I touched that fence, it's gonna be quite uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, we don't have a lot of grass out here right now. Uh, what we're doing, this, this graze right here, this is early spring grazing. We don't have a lot of grass and I'm feeding a bale of hay and I'm letting them graze. So they'll hit this grass and the grass is about that high. So six, eight inches high in some places, in the best places it's six or eight inches high. They graze, this is 
not been grazed and this is what they grazed yesterday. You can see a difference in the color of the grass and the height of the grass. But this time of year, well, you can really see a difference if I look at that. So they grazed, didn't graze. You see back there, the darker green, they didn't, haven't grazed that yet. What we're doing is knocking the tops out of the grass pretty much right here. Hopefully they graze it down to about that high, from about that high, and then we'll move them back out. We're supposed to get rain on Tuesday and Wednesday, which is gonna make this pop again. And the frost definitely set us back. So Royce has been watching Hoof GP on YouTube. How to hoof, hoof trimming content. Do you need to worry about that? or do most become stakes before that's necessary? Um, it's not necessary to trim the hooves of a animal that's out here roaming. Uh, a lot of times you get hoof problems, more hoof problems I'll say, I, I won't say a lot of times, but more hoof problems occur with cattle that are raised on feedlots, okay? So, and there's a lot of people raise their cows on feedlots, they raise them on grain, that's okay. but. but when you confine animals to a really tight space and they basically live and lay in feces and walk in feces all the time, there's no poop in this field, okay? There's no manure. You don't see any manure pats in that field right there. There's some in the other field, but you see none here. So they're walking constantly. And I've had two cows that have had hoof issues and they just cleared up on their own. I have not since I started, and this is gonna jinx me, but since I started raising cows, and it's been several years now, I have not had to give any sort of antibiotic to any cow to help with a hoof issue or a hoof problem. I just haven't had to. So, um, guys, if they're moving and they're mobbing and they're mowing and they're not living their lives in their uh, manure-filled lot, then they don't need medications they don't need treatment they don't need that kind of stuff now we could have a cow step on something like i just picked up let me show you what i just picked up uh can have a cow step on something like an old nail or a fencing uh piece of barbed wire or something like that and they could get um infections from that and they can also get um tetanus from that but they could step on something like that which i just picked up out of the pasture that's part of that handle uh that's used to hold the gates. So I hit it with the mower. I found it, odds of a cow stepping on that and getting some sort of hardware, it's hard, called hardware disease, are pretty low because they're gonna feel that on their feet, okay? So the odds of them stepping on that and getting a hardware disease, whether they consume it or whether they uh, step on it and hurt themselves are pretty darn low, so. Ground up top ranch, Wyoming says, Josh, you're doing it the better way. Thanks, man. Thanks. I, you know, I've had hoof problems and the hoof problems come about a lot of times. Again, I've had, I think, two cows with hoof problems and they just developed a limp. Typically that comes about during the very, very wet season. Okay. So a very wet season, these cows have some dry ground to walk on. And even if you have goats or sheep or anything, you need dry ground to walk on. You put goats out on a wet pasture and it's going to harm them. Okay. So you got to think about that kind of thing. Don't see a lot of flies out. Not a lot of flies yet this year. Hopefully we keep the fly load down. Let me tell you what I'm doing right now. So again, I was telling you, these cows are only going to be out here for just a little bit. It's 1030-ish right now. The cows will be out here until about 5 o'clock. And then I'll open the gate back up that they just came out of, and I'll unroll a bale of hay to them. So they're getting hay, and they're getting green. When they get the green, you can't just take cows or any type of ruminant animal and just place them on green grass. If you do that, you're gonna get, they're gonna get sick. They're gonna get scours. They're gonna get the squirts, for lack of better terminology. Number 40, um, I expect her to calve any time now, <laughs> by the way. Um, I've got swarms of mosquitoes in my yard, says JJ. No mosquito issues really here so much on the farm. Do cows get tetanus shots, says Rob. Yes, cows get what's called a tetanus and blackleg vaccination. Uh, none of these animals have had tetanus and blackleg vaccinations. When you band or castrate your cows, it's definitely recommended to give them a tetanus and blackleg. I've been fussed at by other uh, folks that keep cows, other ranchers. Um, saying uh, don't that uh, I was a yahoo, not giving uh, tetanus and blackleg uh, to all my animals. 
we don't we don't have any issues with that here. This is not land where cattle has been ran before. So uh, if we have that issue, which is going to be totally unfortunate if we do have that issue, um, then we'll most certainly start a vaccination program here on the farm. But so far, there have been no issues whatsoever. The only issue that I worry about would be tetanus. Um, but again, it's a cheap enough vaccine. I think it costs like 50 cents per cow to give that vaccine. We just run them through and give them a little shot and it's a tetanus and black leg. I need a tetanus shot. <laughs> so, but you know, how, how are we gonna, tetanus lives in the soil and so does black leg, okay? Tetanus, uh, it, it sits in the soil and it's an opportunistic thing. So if a cow steps on something that has the tetanus toxoid in it, then the cow potentially could develop tetanus or an infection. So are you going to show video with you putting the gourds out this year if I get to it <laughs> what is black leg black leg is a you're gonna have to google it it's kind of hard for me to explain the, the entire disease process of black leg but it's a maybe somebody else uh, on here can google it and type it out for you but it's a disease that kills cows okay quickly very very quickly James Hayes says, watching your video is enjoyable. Been raising cattle 40 years and I can always learn something by watching and listening. Thank you, James. Appreciate it, buddy. I appreciate it. Got 153 of you in here and only 91 likes. Boy, if you like it, hit that like button if you want to see more content like this. If I've invited you to follow the channel on Facebook, just click accept that invite, okay? We're, we're building a community. We're building a following. And if you're watching on the uh, YouTube on the Cows and Coffee. Be sure you subscribe. We'll let you know when we do a live stream or when we schedule one. I definitely would rather do more live streams, but this takes up about an hour of my day. And a lot of times I don't have an hour or the weather will be so bad that the live stream just won't come out worth a heck. Gary, Jerry, are you in the path of the eclipse? Gosh, let's talk about that. <laughs> what is wrong with everybody? Okay. What is wrong? Are we back in the days of the Mayans here? Where the, the whole world's going to collapse because of the eclipse? What in the world is wrong with everybody? This whole eclipse thing, I could care less. I could care less. I remember being a kid, I think it was like back in the 80s, and we all went outside. We were in elementary school, and they said, don't look up at it. Well, that's what you're up out there looking at. And I remember the eclipse back then. I don't know what gets people all flustered and running around like, I don't even know how to describe, We're just frustrated and running around like nuts when it comes to uh, something like an eclipse. It's just planets passing in front of the sun I, or the moon passing in front of the sun. I don't know. So don't look at it without protection. You can use welding goggles and uh, we'll probably have a partial eclipse here. We're in North Carolina, so I don't think it's going to really pass over. Not hearing any doom and gloom about it. Oh, canine striker. Guys, tell them. Tell them what's out there about the, the, the all sorts of stuff going on. So, all sorts of stuff. Talk, all sorts of talk about um, what the eclipse is going to do. And I, I don't know. I don't get it. It's not me. <laughs> Edwin Garcia says, how is the dating going? Uh, I'm dating the same person. Um, she's She's been great. She's been, she's probably watching right now. Uh, she's been great. It's It's been good. We're not moving too fast. We're just enjoying our each other's company and yeah, couldn't be happier. So it, it is amazing to me when you get out of a relationship that how, how little you really paid attention to the toxicity of that relationship. Uh, while you're in it, how, how love will blind you to toxicity at times. Guys, if you're in a relationship and you're unhappy right now, talk to your partner, talk to your lover, talk to your whoever you're in a relationship with and, and share your feelings with them and, and try to work together. You're not going to change anybody. We're never going to change anybody. I mean, that's just it. And um, Maybe that's what I was doing was trying to, uh, to change someone. Um, if it was changing someone, it was ch trying to change them for the better and teach and, and have a better life together. But um, just understand that if you're unhappy in your relationship, don't look outside the relationship first. 
look inside the relationship and look in the mirror first. And then after you've looked in the mirror and looked inside the relationship and had discussions and worked on it the best you can, um, then go on and move on. So yeah, the dating world is, is going good. It, it takes up a little bit of time, uh, but it's time well spent and, uh, it's, it's good. Warms my, warms my heart, warms my tummy. <laughs> um, Amani Bay says, you've lost a lot of weight. Yeah, I lost about, mm, lost about 85 pounds, uh, gained a little bit of it back. I still try to hit the gym. In fact, when we get done here, I'm probably going to zip down to the gym for a little bit. People say, well, ah, you work so hard on the farm. And I just told you, man, I walked probably miles and miles yesterday. It's not enough. It's really not enough. I think it's more of a clearing your head kind of thing. It's more of a spiritual release, just going getting off the farm, getting off the property, getting away and dedicating some time to just hitting the gym. I mean, it really makes sense. So 85 pounds. Yeah. I mean, I was pushing 300 pounds. So Michael Blum says you deserve to be happy. Thank you, buddy. Thank you so much. The eclipse is a sign. A sign the moon is sometimes between the earth and the sun. Amen, Roy. Amen. It is a sign. I'm sure there'll be many, many live streams of the eclipse in the Midwest, and they say it's going to be cloudy and some people won't see it. But, you know, I could care less, to be honest with you. It's not something that's... It, it'd be neat to see, and I remember seeing it when I was a kid, uh, but it, it's nothing that that's really too exciting. Denise says, black quarter to black quarter evil or quarter L is infectious back. Are you talking about black leg? Yep. There you go. So Denise just posted, uh, something about black leg, what black leg is. So you guys have that information. So the, I've still got buzzards flying over, but there are not very many of them cows right now. If there were buzzards all up in a tree, I think we'd walk over there and you guys want to walk over and investigate the buzzards check them out you can see them flying up in the sky right here maybe you can see them can you see those yeah Do we, should we go over there and check them out same all i'm worried about is getting dark <laughs> it's only gonna be dark for like five minutes buzzard's gonna buzz how did you lose your weight um We'll hear about that in a future video coming soon too. But what I did, I cut out, I cut my carbs down a little bit and there's so much stuff on the internet. Oh, cutting carbs is the wrong thing to do. But, uh, I didn't go full carnivore. I cut carbs and I basically, unbeknownst to me, intermittently fasted. So what I did was I uh, wouldn't eat my breakfast, breaking my fast or breakfast, I would not eat until about two o'clock in the afternoon. So, uh, and I would only eat within an eight hour window. So from two to 10, I could eat. And I cut my carbs back to less than 20 grams of carbs per day. Uh, and I was, just, I'm a six foot five dude and I weighed close to 300 pounds. And I started mountain biking again, getting out in the woods and doing a little biking, a little cycling. I uh, started hitting the gym again, worked on my mental health. Guys, stress will put weight on you. I mean, it totally will put weight on you. Um, stress causes cortisol. Cortisol causes you to gain weight, right? So uh, that's what I did. I just uh, cut the carbs back, started taking a little ownership of my, uh, of my life and reduced my stress. And that's it. And I, I didn't eat until two o'clock in the afternoon on most days, noon to two, something like that. Definitely lost a lot of weight in the last year. York, what's up, brother? Man, York Ash in the house. York, you can remember seeing me. I, I'm the same weight that I was when I was in the Air Force. I was in the Air Force with York. Man, that's crazy having you in here, brother. Long time no talk. <laughs> um, guys, fondest memories of my buddy York. I can't even tell all of them. <laughs> Uh, York was a Mustang guy. I always had a Mustang. York was a fighting guy and a UFC guy. Uh, and York turned me on to Bath and Body Works. <laughs> if you want to laugh. Uh, uh, <laughs> let's go for a walk before I get into too much trouble talking about 
<laughs> Bath and Body Works. Uh, he's like, man, th this is what York taught me. This guy's in the, he's commenting on YouTube right now. And I haven't seen him in, gosh, it's probably been 20, 25 years. Uh, it's good to have you in here, man. So <laughs> York lived with me, was a roommate for a bit. And he's like, man, you know how to get the girls. And I was like, how you get the girls, York? He said, you got to smell good, man. You got to smell like them. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, got to smell like them. He said, go, go over to Bath and Body Works. I'm like, I ain't going in there, man. It's a bunch of chicks in there. I can't be going into Bath and Body Works. It's not, that's not my thing. And as a younger man, we're, <laughs> that kind of stuff makes you nervous, I guess, as a young man. You're like, ah, oh. like going into, uh, which I don't care now. York was much more advanced of a man than I was, I think. <laughs> I don't care now, but uh, like for a, a strong-minded male going into uh, Bath and Body Works or even Victoria's Secret, it took a little bit of, <laughs> it took some manhood to do that. And York taught me that. So it's kind of funny. Um, kind of funny. So we're going to walk here uh, and walk with you guys and see you investigate this buzzard situation, see if something's going on. I do see a problem with the fence right here. Take care of that real quick too. Pull that post. Let's scoop this up and not get shocked. Whoop. Or maybe get shocked. <laughs> there we go. There we go. It's funny the pass that, uh, that life takes us on, isn't it? Um, York was my roommate when I was living in Utah, living in a trailer park in Utah. And believe me, I have spent some time living in trailer parks. Live cheap. I don't, you know, when you're living for somebody else, that's when you really care about what everybody else thinks of you. I don't care what people think. You know, everybody obviously wants to be liked by everyone. Okay. Here's our buzzards. I'm going to turn the camera around real quick, guys. We got to check this out. Everybody likes to be liked by everyone, but if you're doing things to impress the Joneses, you're doing the wrong thing. Here's the bunch of buzzards. They're all right here. We're going to walk up here and see what we got going on. Maybe there's some afterbirth right there that they're consuming. You'll see them fly up there in a second. This is a worthwhile investigation. There they go. Can you guys see those? And that was no joke. That was like, I don't know, 10 or 12 buzzards. Let's go right over here and see what the heck they were looking into. Make sure we don't have a cow down. How many cows did you guys count? Oh yeah, I believe JJ was referring to the electric fence, Michael. <laughs> okay, we got a rabbit. How'd that happen? That's a Waskwe rabbit. Huh, that's kind of gross. That's a rabbit. <laughs> um, hmm, that's weird. Let me turn the camera back around. I'm not going to put a camera on a, a rabbit, but... Um, Life and death on the farm. Yeah. I wonder what happened. I wonder if the cows, guys, so rabbits come out here. I'll show you. Um, a lot of people fuss at me for, there's nowhere wildlife can live here on the farm. There's plenty of places wildlife can live on the farm. Um, and right in here, there's a hedgerow. And all the debris and stumps that were in this pasture were dumped off over in that hedgerow. And it's made awesome habitat for things like rabbits and skunks and coyotes and foxes and but that's a rabbit i'm not sure that's why the buzzards were over here there was a dead animal i'm not sure what's up with the rabbit why the, maybe the cows accidentally stepped on a rabbit last night they get freaked out pretty easy and they will pretty much attack anything and everything that's out of the ordinary go i've got me a rock here every day the deal I have with myself is to pick up uh, 10 rocks. 
trash trash out of a hay bale this this hay was mowed near the side of the road where everybody throws trash out here in north carolina i it's an absolute shame that people throw out so much trash here in in my state and it's not just north carolina it's all over everywhere but it's an absolute disgrace and an absolute shame uh, that i'd have to worry about trash in hay bales from people throwing trash out of their cars i live just far enough away from mcdonald's and bojangles and taco bell and uh burger king for all of the debris to be d thrown out the window on my road thanks york appreciate it york says the youtube channel is awesome <sighs> i'm out of breath <laughs> see told you i need to go to the gym denise says it's so simple just carry a five gallon bucket in your car and put trash in the bucket or just i have a box in my car and i just keep it in a box and then when i stop to get gas i empty the box out or if you keep up with it it's just like keeping your house clean if you keep up with it it stays clean and if you don't your place is a disaster i got up this morning while i was making coffee washed all my dishes i don't own a dishwasher I haven't had a dishwasher or used a dishwasher in, gosh, how many years? Since, well, 2001? Yeah, I haven't owned, owned and or used a dishwasher since 2001. Don't need a dishwasher. You got to wash them before you put them in a dishwasher anyway, right? Let's run back down here. So ask away. There's more trash from inside a hay bale. So ask away, guys. If you have any questions about what we're doing with the animals, how we're raising them, check this out. This is a paddock, what I call a sacrifice paddock, okay? See how there's no grass out here. Look right across, green grass, okay? What I'm gonna be doing is hopscotching the animals back and forth to the sacrifice paddock at night and then back over into the green grass paddock during the day. Another rock. <laughs> Um, and what this is going to do, we're going to bring the Wingfield drag harrow over here, and you'll see that in a future video, and we'll drag all these manure pats that you can see out here out into the pasture, and this will flourish. My sacrifice paddock last year was this guy. See the difference? So the hay this year is stored right here, okay? And we only have about 15 more days of hay. The hay from last year was stored right here. So this was my sacrifice paddock last year, and this is my sacrifice paddock this year, where that rabbit was. You saw all the hay on the ground out there where that rabbit was. Got some blood right there. We may have another cow getting ready to have a calf. When you walk around your pastures, you got cows like this, man. You'll see all sorts of stuff. A little spot of blood right there. I'm not so sure that the cows didn't kill that rabbit. To be honest with you. Maybe they saw it as a threat and decided to eliminate that threat. Did you see me chuck that rock over there? It fell right beside the wire that I need to pick up. <laughs> uh, all right, it's Q&A time. Question and answer. If you've never asked a question, I'm going to tell you, ask. There's 150 of you in here. I can't answer all questions at the same time, but yeah. Um, why are we rebuilding the land, moving animals back and forth? What for? Says York. Uh, Curtis Lawson says hello. Hey, Curtis. So there's a thought process here behind if you just let the cows come out here and graze, they're going to pick through all of the best tasting and and uh, most palatable grass okay so they're going to pick through and they're going to get the best clover and they're going to get the best fescue grass they're going to get the best grasses the best tasting stuff and then they're going to ignore the rest of it so if all of this which is all around me we're in a i think this field's about 35 acres if i just opened it up to 35 acres the whole 35 acres would look like that okay so imagine if you mowed your yard down 
as low as you could get it with the, with the blades on the lawnmower, how it dries up the land. How does it, does it stimulate grass growth or does it stop grass growth? The answer is on a typical lawn, it stops grass growth. So what happens when we overgraze and we graze it down to that high is it stops the growth of the grass. We need time for recovery. So we bounce them back and forth, hay and grass, hay and grass, hay and grass, and we give this grass time to recover. They were on this section four days ago, okay? Three days ago, two days ago, today. So um, the, the thought process here is they never have to really graze next to their own manure. So they're not grazing in the sacrifice paddock, they're eating hay. They never have to graze next to their own manure. When you don't eat next to your own manure, then the propensity for getting parasites is a lot lower, okay? We're also stimulating the growth of the grass. When you trim and prune grass, and even the saliva from the cows helps stimulate grass growth. So if we prune it back from this to this versus from this to this, then our grass grows better, more vigorously, and what's above the ground is a good indicator of what's below the ground. And we need those roots to penetrate deep into the soil, seeking out water. And for them to penetrate deep, we've got to have a big plant on the top for a big root system down below. So that's it, rotational grazing. So where does all your meat end up after? After what? Um, we processed cattle, um, did three beef cows this year. Trying to set up online beef sales has been a total challenge for me. I'm running into hurdles, government hurdles. If you're a member of the Patreon uh, co-op for getting beef, please just be patient with me. I'm telling you, I've got the boxes, I've got the insulated bags, I've got everything we need and we're putting together packages where folks can order beef. I uh, have to go to patreon.com forward slash Stony Ridge Farmer, become a member of the co-op. Um, for as little as five bucks a month. And as soon as beef is available, we'll start shipping beef out. It's just me here and I've just got to wait. I have to wait on some government hurdles. So if we process a beef cow, it goes into freezers. Uh, I've got three deep freezers and I'm getting ready to buy a fourth deep freezer because we've got three animals that are gonna be processed in late May, early June, okay? What's happening with the mobile chicken coop? Somebody asked about the chickens earlier. We don't have any more chickens on the farm. We got raided by foxes uh, and it took out the chickens. It just totally took out all the chickens. Even the chickens that I had up next to the house that were laying eggs. So we've got a new batch of chickens coming in, hopefully middle of this month. And we'll start over again. We'll have some meat bird chickens. We'll show you guys how we raise the meat birds and we'll show you how we process them. And we're gonna get a hundred laying hens. What I've got to do with the chickens is figure out a better fencing scenario and we're gonna get some guard geese. I could probably do uh, a guard dog, a livestock guardian dog, but I don't wanna take care of another dog. So my plan is to try guardian geese and see how they work. Please explain Roy. Yeah, we'll talk about that for sure, Roy. Roy asked about the government hurdles to selling. There's so many hurdles, okay. Are you going to use super soil again? Would you suggest it every year, or every other year? Angie. So super soil is uh, a, now I guess a sponsor of the channel. They don't pay me to, to sell it to you or anything like that. Um, and if you Google search it, there's a link in the videos that I use super soil with. But super soil is uh, an inoculant, which sprays microbes out on the soil. I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, I, I can't tell a huge difference out here in the pasture, but I sprayed my lawn with it and my lawn is exploding with growth. And I sprayed the pastures over here uh, closer to the house and they're exploding with growth. So I think we're seeing growth both with everything. I think it's not just super soil that's making the pastures grow. And I think it's everything. I think it's the manure. I think it's the grazing. I think it's everything uh, all in one. We do have a new product that I have to wait until the grass gets a little bit taller that we can spray on. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray like four stripes. And this new product is in a jug about this big. 
and it's enough to, to spray like 50 acres. So I'm just going to test it out in different sections of pasture. And also I've got a lot to work on. You see how green this is, how green that is. Look on this hillside up here. You can see right there, super brown, okay? Not desirable grasses, and that's something we've been working on. You will see next weekend a video about bale grazing and about how we have built the soil on the farm. So that, that's coming next weekend on the main YouTube channel. Do geese go after people too? Yeah. Yeah, man, walk up to the lake during laying season. <laughs> You'll find out. Uh, don't eat where you poop, says Roy. Very true. Did you decide to sell some cows? Yeah, Todd, the, the video is already out. Uh, I did, I sold 15 cows. We took them up to the stockyard and sold them. I actually have a few more. I think we have 54 cows. So we went from like 52, I took 15 to the sale barn and now we're back to, I think I'm already back to like 54. So we've got a lot of calves this year, lots of calves. And those guys are chowing down. Look at them behind us. That's pretty awesome. Why do we see repeated videos on Facebook, Linda? Some videos get recycled and brought back out. You know, here's the deal, Linda. Think about this on YouTube and on Facebook. I publish some worthwhile content that's worth looking at, that's worth watching, that's, that's educational, that you can learn from, that, that once it's out, it's, it's just gone. So it's out for a week and then it's lived its life and then it's gone forever and people don't see it anymore. So that's why you're seeing repeated content that's being re-edited and brought back out on Facebook. And some of that you'll see also on YouTube. Uh, you'll see content from three, four years ago that's being re-edited and brought back out. That's just the nature of doing this, this business because when I put that when I put out a video, it's so much time and so much work and, and make no mistake, the live streams here, they actually cost me money to, to produce. Um, I have to subscribe to a service that allows me to produce a live stream video for you. Um, so that's why they keep coming back out. So you'll have valuable information and things get put to rest. So you publish a video and it, it jumps up and it gets a bunch of views and then it just boop, just disappears off the algorithm, I guess is the word for it. So we reproduce some of the videos. That's it. Old con content is still often relevant. Yeah, exactly. It's entertainment. It's entertainment, it's education, it's fun. And that's why you see it coming back and forth. When are you putting the second floor in the shop barn dominium, says York. As soon. So there are government, more government hurdles there as soon as finances are right. I'll tell you guys this. I have set my sights on paying this place off, okay? I had, before my divorce, I had the entire farm completely paid for and money stacked up in the bank. I had everything paid for, uh, was completely debt-free and was working on saving for retirement, okay? I am not completely debt-free anymore and I'm gonna pay this place off before I expand and build and build and expand. Um, we're, we're finishing up the outdoor kitchen and we're going to slow it down just a little bit until I can get this place paid for. I, debt is, is prison in my mind. I want to be debt free. So to answer your question, York, maybe in the fall, I've got to, first of all, submit a plan to engineers, then have that engineered plan approved, then order my trusses, $30,000, then have either myself, I don't know enough about framing to frame it myself. I've got a good friend of mine, his name is Josh, I was in the military with, and he's a framer. So I may fly him out and we may frame the whole thing up ourselves and hang the trusses and frame the, uh, the upstairs up. But, um, and then I have to get all this government approval to do anything that I wanna do on my land. I can't, I can't go build out the barn dominium portion of the shop without the government checking a box saying it's okay and I have to follow every single rule that they want. Even though it's my house and I live, I can set up a tent right over here and live in that tent and that's illegal. I could go to the bathroom over here and that's illegal. Pretty soon they're gonna start requiring us to put chips in the cow's ears and every animal will be tracked and you can't take them to the sale barn because that will be illegal without a chip in their ear. And you'll have to have 
vaccination records for every animal. It's just so much, so much. You find when you, when you get a place like this and, and you don't live in like a neighborhood and you don't live in an apartment or a condo or a townhouse, you find that every single thing you want to do is illegal in some sort of way. So F. Huber says debt is a cancer. It is. And guys, make no mistake, I live in a 1,200 square foot mobile home over there that I paid $3,500 for. That's cheap living. The expense is building all of this, building this farm. And the reason I got a loan after the divorce is it cleaned me out. It just cleaned me out. I had to buy my farm back, okay? It cleaned me out. And I was in the process of putting up that building, that big building up there. Make no mistake, that building is expensive. It took a lot of time, a lot of work, and I've still got to wire everything up. I've still got tons and tons of things to get done up there. Uh, and I'm just gonna get out of debt first. Why am I spending, wasting, and you guys are probably, some of you guys are probably doing this too. Why are we wasting money handing it over to the bank for the privilege of owning something that's too big for us that we don't need to own in the first place? Why? This is my retirement, okay? This is my retirement, but I also have to save for retirement, and I'm unable to save for retirement as long as I'm buried up to my eyeballs in debt. I don't need a brand new truck. I don't need a brand new car. The things that I buy, I'm either I'm either going to buy them outright or I'm not going to have them. I'm going to wait. So, Darla, 7000 that could go on towards our horse rescue. What you talking about here? I couldn't remove squatters from our farm without spending $7,000 on court. I'll tell you what, somebody comes up here and squats, we got issues. They will not be comfortable, okay? Nobody's going to come here and squat, I wouldn't think, and I hate it for you. K9 Striker, I think you're in, uh, tell me where you're at again. I think you're in, uh, it's not Indiana, is it? Kentucky. I think you're in Kentucky, right? Darla says, do you seed your pastures ever? Yes, Darla. So on the back of the ATV, you see this little area of sparse grass on the back of the ATV, typically before I move the cows into a paddock now. I will go through with a broadcast spreader. I bought a pallet of grass seed last year and I will broadcast grass seed all in here. All under my feet right now is grass seed where these cows have gone through and mashed the grass seed into the ground. So yes, this entire sacrifice paddock about 10 days ago or eight days ago, I seeded that entire paddock. We're gonna put the seed spreader on the back of the tractor along with the drag harrow. Somebody asked about what the drag harrow cost is. We'll address that in a second. Um, yeah, we'll be dragging. So we'll seed and drag at the same time so the manure will fall on top of the grass seed and help it grow. Lot of land to bury now, <laughs> says Bruce. Put the squatters to work if they want to stay. I don't, yeah, I don't understand the squatter thing. Average person now has $15,000 of credit, credit card debt, $20,000 interest, Let's just think about this. We're living way above our means. Why are we spending more than we make? Who, is it, who are we trying to impress? Why are we doing that? Why would we do that? Well, that's foolish, isn't it? That's just foolish. That is foolish, foolish, right? Everybody just about has to go into debt for a house, but you ain't got to go into debt to buy a pickup truck or a car. You're going into debt for your wants and not your needs. And when you go into debt for your wants and not your needs, you are floundering in financial failure and you will forever be buried in, in lower middle class. You just will. Is there anything wrong with considering yourself lower middle class? No, because I consider myself lower middle class, okay? Sometimes low class. <laughs> um, is there anything wrong with that? Absolutely not. Is there something wrong with spending more than you make to buy the things that you want versus the things that you need? Yes, there is, and it's not the right thing to do, and the reason you're buried alive in credit card debt is because you're doing the wrong thing and you're being punished for it. Am I wrong? Tell me. Linda says you've been debt-free for several years. Congratulations. Have you got anything from TYM why they kicked you out? Dwight Henderson. My contract expired with TYM, um, and we have been in discussions about renewing the contract. I did email them this week. Uh, to see uh, 
what's happened. My contract expired. They didn't want to renew. Now it seems as if they want to work together again, but it's all kind of up in the air right now. I haven't heard anything. So yeah, don't know. It is so gorgeous out here, guys. Man, look at, you just don't get a day like this. Sun is way high. I really want to go to that Martinsville race today. Gosh, it's only 20 minutes away from for a NASCAR race, it's gonna be gorgeous. So, anyway, we were, we, I was ranting about debt, and it's the truth. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of us are, we're watching and we're seeing stuff on TV, we're seeing the things that we think we need, and that everybody's telling us we need, and we're spending way more than we need to spend. When a brand new truck costs over $100,000, we don't need that. I've got a good friend of mine, uh, Love the guy to death. Watch him make horrible financial decisions all the time. Even spoke to him about making his horrible financial decisions. He's buying a new car, new truck, new this, new that, every other month. Like, there's just, there's just no sense in it. There's just no sense in it. If you're buying things because you're unhappy as a person, stop buying things and start finding a way to be happy as a person. Some people are doing that. I mean, they are. They're, you guys probably know somebody right now that probably buys a brand new car or a brand new truck every other year because they're not happy, because they're just not happy with their, themselves. That's not the reason to do that. I think we need to find a way to make ourselves happy. Now, I understand if it's for business, totally get it. Totally get it. It's a tax protection thing. Um, but I don't get spending a pile of money on every single thing that you want and going into debt for it. So that's it. That's <laughs> when York asked me about fixing up the inside of the mega shop and getting that barn dominium finished. That's kind of what sparked this conversation. My goal is to be completely debt free by the end of 2024. That is my goal. I, I just see no reason for it anymore. And I've been wasting money, countless dollars of wasted money by going into debt, going into debt for a car, going into debt for a truck, going into debt for a building, going into debt to buy land. I mean, we just don't need it. We just don't need it. So buy the place that you'll be happy with, stick with it, set your sales in a direction and get out of debt, man. I mean... I've said this many times on the channel, what's the world's dumbest animal? The squirrel. Why is the squirrel the world's dumbest animal? Because when things get tough, when he runs out in the road and he doesn't know what to do, what does he do? Zip, 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 splat. Set a path and correct that path as needed to make yourself more successful. I don't know. I didn't mean for this to turn into a Tony Robbins lecture. <laughs> um, I'm outing a rebuilt transmission on a 2008 pickup. It lasts another 130,000 miles. There you go. I, I hear that, Roy. I hear the, uh, I'd see more bootstrap. I'd like to see more bootstrap content like DIY farm implements. I only bought a new vehicle once in my life, regretted it. Yeah. Yep. We've, you know, a lot of what I use here on the farm and a lot of what I've got, I, I, it's, it's all that I need. It really is all that I need. And a lot of what I do for my business and for, for YouTube is to show cool new stuff. If you guys didn't see the YouTube video, uh, when we get done here, go over and watch the video uh, when I went to Las Vegas. I went to uh, the National Hardware Show. That was a real treat, a real experience. It was a great time. I got to see my buddy Stanley the Dirt Monkey, my friend Dan and Eric from Tools in Action. I made so many great friends uh, doing this uh, YouTube and social media stuff. Uh, my good friend Brian from uh, uh, that Fix It guy, great guy, volunteers to do work all the time on people's houses. Just so many awesome people. Did you sell the Raptor and get an FJ? I have not yet sold the Raptor. It's been up for sale for quite some time. I'm not going to take a huge loss on it. I know it's good to go. It's it's right. Everything's fixed on it. Um, should last the next person 150,000 more miles. Um, but I'm, uh, yeah. I haven't gotten rid of it yet. I did buy an FJ Cruiser, and that's going to be the replacement for the Raptor. So, Sean Freitas says, I saw your own Instagram, too. I've been on Instagram for about four years now, but I just don't post a lot of Instagram content. Um, I'll post the uh, little video clip and some pictures 
from when I busted the glass out of the new cast loader. Uh, that was a treat. I spent two and a half, well, two hours probably vacuuming up broken glass from the driveway. Oh, that was dumb. You'll see a video of me replacing the glass soon though. Never bought a new vehicle, inherited my last two cars. There's something to be said for buying your own vehicle also. And there's something to be said for the pride of ownership and, and buying something and, and taking pride in it too. Uh, I try to keep my cars clean if I can, best I possibly can, along with my equipment. I get fussed at about that. Ah, your equipment's too, uh, too clean. That tractor's never seen dirt. I just like to keep it clean. Keep it clean, take care of it, and last you a long time. Uh, a long time ago, Grandpa told me that. My grandfather told me that. You know, take care of the things that you have and they'll last. That's it. Um, need to start making magnetic glass. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Permitting is to protect the next person for someone's hack job, says. Uh, says Candy Apple Red. I totally 100,000% disagree. That's why you get a home inspection. When you buy or sell a place, uh, you get a home inspection. I totally disagree. My neighbor's house back here was built in 1910. Do you think that that home was built to code? At, in 1910, do you think they had to get a home inspection on every single thing that was done in that home? No. Do you think if I bought that home or someone bought that home that I would need to be protected because uh, got to feel good because the government's going to take good care of me because they inspected it. No, I don't. No, I should be able to do what I want to do on my place. If I fall through a hole in my floor, it's my diagonal hole and I should be able to fall through it if I want to. Right. <laughs> Candy apple red. Wait, you just said you don't need a brand new truck or car, but you have them. We're talking about going into debt, buddy. That's what we're talking about. My my primary vehicle is a 2014. My second secondary vehicle is a 2007. The other one is a 2009. My pickup truck that I use every day is a 2000 model, okay? So you can pick me apart like a politician all you want to, brother. It ain't going to do you any good. It's not. I get it all the time. It's not. I want nice things. You want nice things. We all want nice things. But the thing is, what I'm telling you is you don't have to bury yourself alive in debt for your wants, not your needs. That's what I'm telling you, brother. That's it. So I hope you can get that message. Do you think tractors need a shelter, even simple one like a barn? Or will it last parked under the stars? Roy, I think preferably every tractor should be under shelter. What really messes up a tractor that's out in the open is first of all the sun just baked it bakes it and causes things to prematurely wear uh, and secondly your fuel tanks exposure to heat and cold that cold at night hot in the day when the sun's beating down on it causes the the modern day diesel fuel uh, to sweat in other words to condensate and that condensation can get into your fuel system cause algae issues and cause a ton of problems so yeah definitely better to keep a tractor under a shed and i'd love to be able to put all my tractors in the building but currently i just can't get them all in there so the thing about broken glass when you think about it is is you've got it all oh you think you got it all and it still pops up yeah i was the only reason i vacuumed it with the shop vac out of the driveway is because i don't want the dog to step in it so morning zach Good morning. Man, everybody's on here. Good stuff. Can't take it with you when you die, says Rob. Yep. Well, guys, I am done moving the cows for the morning here. They're all happy. They're all over there. We figured out what was up with the buzzard. Uh, there was a dead rabbit in the field. I have no idea where that came from. We talked about getting out of debt and trying to pay your bills and not buying things that you don't need uh, and going into debt for them. Lots of fun stuff today, guys. Uh, if there's any take home message, take care of yourself, guys. Get out there, enjoy some sunshine today, get some exercise, have some fun, and, uh, and the fun is on me today. Thank you guys so much. Please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. Love to have you back. If you've been invited to follow on Facebook, click yes, accept that invitation. All it does is let you know when I post a video. So 
Thank you guys. We'll see you next time on the Stony Ridge Farm Channel. Woo! <laughs> Have a great day.